Hello, Bible readers. It's July 8th. Today's readings are from Job chapters 14 to 17 and Mark 6. And I I found today's readings to be <clears throat> especially interesting. Um, Herod and John the Baptist. It's such an incredible, uh, it's a story full of, I can just feel the emotions and the, the stupidity and the, it's, it's ridiculous uh, that this king would give up all decision-making for a girl. I mean, it, it is real buffoonery uh, in action. And it's interesting. I found it interesting reading this at the same time as reading Job. I, I felt kind of Job-ish on John the Baptist's behalf uh, to feel like, you know, if I was John, I'd be like, so all I've done is be obedient I've lived like purely my whole life and now I get beheaded by the king for no better reason than this girl that he's trying to impress in this gross way just wants my head on a platter because it'll please her mom. It's just the whole thing is so weird uh, and just weird enough to be to be true. Um, the other thing I thought would be worth mentioning is, and we'll come, we've already come across numbers a few different times, but numbers are very important throughout Scripture. Authors will use numbers uh, as symbols, oftentimes to communicate even more than what their words are communicating. And so the number 40, we've already had 40 appear uh, in Noah and the Ark story. Um, the number seven will pop up a lot in scripture. And 12. 12 is really, really uh, important, especially as it has to do with the tribes of Israel. It almost always connects back to uh, those tribes. We haven't gotten to that in Genesis yet, I know. Um, but, you know, Jesus in this feeding story, he feeds from five loaves and two fish and then has how many baskets of leftovers? 12. Because 12 is symbolically says God will have enough left over to feed all the tribes of Israel. Uh, not just some people will be fed, but all will be fed. That's what that's what's being communicated with that number 12. In Job, there's different cycles in Job where his friends are going to offer advice or critique or whatever in cycles. There's So each one gets at least two, some of them three different... Um, tries at convincing Job that he needs to do this and he should do that. And and um, in this cycle, everybody's getting angrier. Um, we've left some of the pleasantries and some of the compliments behind, and now the friends are just like going after and going deeper. Um, Job's getting angrier because he still feels like he's innocent. The friends are getting angrier out of exasperation. They are so certain that he must have done something. You know, Job must deserve all this that's happening to him somehow. Um, I'm always struck by <clears throat> what terrible listeners these, <laughs> these friends are. They're not listening to Job at all. They're not considering his character at all. They're just asserting. They're telling. It's almost like they have two mouths and one ear, not the other way around. Chapter 16, verse 7, Job says, Surely now God has worn me out. Job, you know, we talked about the courtroom yesterday, the, the metaphor of, of a courtroom. Job is now considering God, a, kind of a different metaphor, as a warrior who's just worn him down. Because that's, that's how hand-to-hand -hand combat goes. Oftentimes the person who wins is the person with more endurance. And God's got more than him. And yet... Despite how tired Job is, how worn down he is, he still in this section is praying to God. Job never does stop doing that. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places. 